Christopher from Down Under. Just a short video on freehand grinding, freehand sharpening of drills and tools. I know a lot of you folk out there will be very familiar with freehand grinding and all you'll get from this video is um, one or two unusual ways of doing things perhaps. Um, but there's others I know who are not familiar with freehand grinding that are used to buying sharpened cutters and um, they don't really understand how useful a diamond dressed bench grinder can be. So I thought I'd do an introductory video just on that subject. So this is really just to try and tempt you into it. Um, to, to do the subject justice I'd need to do about 10 videos but this is just an introductory video to show you with a few basic tools you can do some really useful work. So to start with I'll do a short video, introductory video on freehand drill grinding and preparing your bench grinding wheels and dressing them with a mounted diamond on a stick. I really encourage you to have diamond dressed sharp bench grinding wheels that you can grind your drills and your tool bits and make cutters quickly and easily. It's a skill really worth developing for tool making work and precision machining and um, CNC machining. Okay, I'll get on with it. Cheers. It all starts with a finely dressed wheel. I've got a tool maker's clamp and a dressing diamond. You can pivot like that. Rest that on the steady. Pivot the diamond into the wheel. Do that without breathing so I don't have to bother with a dust mask. Okay, let me go through it really short and to the point. Keep this simple as possible. So there's two things we're concerned about here. The angle this way and the angle this way. And we're not going to try and grind too much at once. We're just going to grind the cutting edge. So we're going to engage our finger and thumb in the flute of the drill and rest it on the stand there. We're going to get it rotationally right and then we're going to try and repeat it each time. Okay, I'll switch it on now so you won't be able to hear me. Many people will tell you, well, that's all wrong. You have to tip the drill to get the clearance angle each time, or you have to come this way to get the clearance angle each time. And I'd say that's, I used to do that for many years, but I think that's a, a bad plan because you're trying to simultaneously achieve too many different things. If you just concentrate on the cutting edge, that's the part that matters getting that really accurate, the angle right, and getting it central, the back off, or the clearance, is only clearance. Clearance is clearance. Um, you can use a coarse wheel, dressed coarse, and you can do that finally. I'll just do that now. So I'm just tipping up a little bit more, coming in, and tailing it off. Tipping up a little bit more, coming in, and tailing it off. That's only clearance, and you don't want to waste time trying to do that as well. Okay, what I want to do now is thin the web down. The web is too fat through here, and it will just push the metal ahead rather than cutting it. So we need to remove this portion. Um, I'm trying to show it to you without the machine running so you can hear me. So let's just go through that. Basically, you get it in the right rotary orientation. You want to avoid 
the side of the wheel grinding this face because that's got the uh, steep front rake on it and you don't want to touch that so you've got it rotated so that you can't touch it like that you backed away and you come in on this part of the curve here and just bury the grinding wheel in until you can see it's thinned down enough okay see if I can show that rotary in the right place usually a bit more of a turn than you think is necessary come in that. and hopefully you can see now I've thinned the web not quite enough yet but just to get you the idea from a filming point of view and you see that has ground the front rake surface further towards the centre and now this drill will cut much more like a small drill because the cutting edge is running in closer to the centre line. I'll probably give it another couple of grinds. This is just an old drill, it's really only fit for the rubbish bin. It's worn out on the outer flutes. So I'm just using it to demonstrate the purpose while I'm filming. I'm not worried too much about the end result. But, you know, that looks uh, like it needs a little bit more off the web thinning stage. I'm just reviewing that clip. It's very hard for you to see, isn't it? Just the angles that I'm on. Um, okay, I've got another drill that needs its web thinning. I'll see if I can better show it with the camera on that angle. Uh, the light is really important. A fine, narrow wheel, diamond dressed with sharp corners is essential. So okay, so we find the right rotary position because we don't want to grind. <laughs> I've walked off without my pencil. We don't want to grind this inside face of the front rake there. We want to avoid that, so we're, we're rotating it away and we're coming in here and grinding that way. See if we can do that. It's never very good when you're filming, but I'm trying to get you the general idea anyway. See that there? Needs a little bit more on this side. That's about right now. You can see the, the web is thin right down there. Okay, so let's go through it now just really briefly. So there's three stages, or four stages. We've got a rough bench grinding wheel which we're going to use to rough the drill down to remove any chips and bluntness and get it roughly shaped right that can be a diamond dressed and then finally touched with a star wheel dresser so that it cuts really rapidly then we've got a diamond dressed fine wheel that we use just to grind the cutting edge we're not doing any rotary or back offs here we're just grinding the cutting edge we're getting it central and with the right angles. Then we go back to the coarse grinding wheel just to grind the clearance relief out the back there. And finally, we're using a narrow fine wheel to thin the web. Diamond dressed again with sharp corners. Okay, looking at that up close, you can see here that's our main cutting edge that's ground with a traverse movement only on the fine diamond dress wheel there and there you can see just a few degrees of clearance there then we've got the back off which is not critical it's just ground on the coarse grinding wheel and then see if I can show you the thinned out portion here this is where we thin out the web, that bulk of material out of there, so that that cutting edge 
runs through to the center line or at least close to the center line and this distance here is less it's just a rough example for filming purposes but it gives you the idea of those three main operations now this is very quick if you've got your bench grinding wheels dressed and ready to go you can pull the drill out of your job and actually quickly touch up your drill um, and if it's cu cutting unevenly quickly even it up much quicker than having to set up a special grinding attachment so I think it's a, a skill worth developing and um, learning to grind freehand Okay, finally, let's just show that drill we've just sharpened cutting. It's a 12.4 millimeter high-speed steel drill. We just cut straight into a bit of black mild steel without any coolant, so we don't spray the camera. We should see even length chips coming off each side if we've ground it correctly, and it should cut freely without um, any great resistance if we thin the web correctly. <laughs> And you can see the two chips coming off, there and there, both about the same length. It shows it's cutting evenly. Really needs coolant, but it seems pretty good. Well, bench grinders are quite cheap, so you might as well have a few set up and diamond dressed to run through so that you can quickly touch up your drills, turning tools, reflex cutters, end mills, and it's just so handy to have. The, just for interest, the, the, the wheels that I use the most are this thin cutoff wheel here, really handy uh, for grinding through hardened steel and so on. Um, this big 8 inch 200 mil grinder, the fine wheel, diamond dressed, I use most of all for sharpening um, and, and producing cutting edges on drills and turning tools. And this big rough wheel here which I diamond dress and just touch with a star wheel dresser over here. And what that does is break up the wheel and produce, expose really sharp cutting grains um, that remove metal really rapidly. Um, so, so those three wheels plus the fi a fine narrow wheel diamond dressed with sharp corners that you don't break down the corners of, those four wheels are the ones I use all the time and they're just really worth having. In addition to my main bench grinders I've got this really cheap and nasty little bench grinder and a couple of worn diamond wheels that I've picked up on uh, eBay type websites you know you can get them for 10 20 dollars and the grinder for 30 or 40 dollars and then you've got the facility to grind tungsten carbide as well and i've got a bigger cutoff grinder here with a v-block on it and a stop i'll have to go through this someday really handy for grinding ejector pins and hardened steel pins and so on And of course, a linisher, an absolute must for fabrication work. I don't do a lot of fabrication work, but when I do, this is a big time saver. Now, I know there's all sorts of attachments you can buy to help you to grind your drills and turning tools quickly and easily. And the special drill grinding machines. And you know, I've got quite a few things like that. But I actually hardly ever use them because once you develop these basic skills, and they're not rocket science, it's just a matter of laying down the procedure, um, you'll find you can do 95% of the work just freehand, actually more like 99% of the work. And by the time you've got your attachment out and got it going, you've already sharpened it freehand. So I really encourage you to learn those skills and get the gear. Um, it's so cheap to have a couple of bench grinders and a diamond and you can have nice sharp wheels and be in control of your work right from the cutting tool onwards. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah.